Hello again everyone, Mary Rose here at Stitch Bliss Corner on the 2nd of March 2024 and uh, I'd like to say a big hello to everyone and uh, I hope you're having a good day today. Uh, it's getting towards the end of our summer uh, but we've had a lot of uh, cyclones and things up in Queensland and um, that weather does tend to uh, spread across the country a bit and uh, you know you get humidity and a bit of rain as a result so um, it's been a bit like that. Uh, I'm hoping today because it's Saturday that the skies will be blue later for all the brides uh, because it's always nice for their photos to have a nice blue sky. Uh, a lot of you know brides do worry about their wedding day and what the weather will be like not surprisingly I think we've we've all uh, experienced that and um, but hopefully things will be okay for them I always think of them on a Saturday <laughs> anyway. anyway on with the uh, video now before I go any further I would like to sincerely thank all the people that uh, complimented me on the last video which I dedicated to uh, this particular piece which is Dear Guest from Far Away by Oscar uh, Freeworth Lutzow and uh, that was the entire video I just dedicated to that piece um, and I must say that when I look at it I can scarce believe that I have actually completed it and it's there on the wall and uh, it's well you never tire of looking at it I mean it's just mesmerizing so <laughs> anyway for those of you who are, who are not fans of that particular piece which I would fully understand because it's not everybody's cup of tea rest assured that you won't have to see that piece again <laughs> so that's that's something isn't it now so we'll move on now to what I did after I completed that piece and I actually stitched on this one uh, the Dove of Peace by Sandra Berrigan or Bergeron I should say Bergeron and uh, she's done she's done a very thoughtful piece there on um, the symbols of Christianity and faith and I, she's done a beautiful job and this lion here I think he might be based on I'm, I have no proof of this but I'm just wondering if she was influenced to put him there uh, because of a book called The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe which was a, a book written by C.S. Lewis and that lion Aslan in the story was symbolic of Christ uh, and I think he has a very for a lion he's got a very benevolent look about him and I was very careful with the stitching to try and replicate that wonderful a uh, benevolent look on his face which you don't really associate with a lion and there is the branch in the dove's beak that told Noah that uh, the floods were receding. Uh, beautiful story. Uh, anyway, so here is the stitching. So I'll just show you that first. It's a fantail dove, as you can see. Harlequin likes doves uh, and pigeons. <laughs> he puts seeds on the roof of our garage for them to come down and, uh, you know, feeds them through winter as well so that they're happy. They live inside the bamboo. <laughs> We've got some bamboo out there. And one morning I went out and a, a dove stuck its head out, <laughs> out of this sort of big area of foliage of the bamboo and there's this dove's head poked out to look and see what I was doing it was really quite funny uh, 
because of course it's good in there because they're protected you know and uh, I think there's a few cats around and uh, they're pretty safe inside there so I made a few notes here I found hold of um, now what was suggested for the outline of the dove you know the feathers the wings and everything and the and the and the head of the dove what was suggested was black uh, but i didn't use black i used a dark gray 413 to outline the wings dmc 413 and i chose black to outline the features within the design there are tiny stitches on the lion's muzzle and I used 3371 on the tree trunks rather than black and the wheels on the carriage I had to make them round I just couldn't see on here that's something that I <laughs> it's just a thing for me when you see designs and they've got wheels that are hexagonal in the, I, I just I can't help the reason in my head I think that would go clunk, clunk, clunk. You know, you couldn't sit in a wagon that's got hexagonal wheels. <laughs> so I'll make my wheels round. So as you can see on here, now, oh, it's, it's very difficult to see because it's right. I'll just take a, a photo. Hang on a tick. That might be easier. that's still hard to see it's hard to see but see how they're sort of like overly looking <laughs> it's very hard to see that's the little wagon there and here's Aslan oh I call him Aslan the lion there he had very tiny stitches up around his muzzle which would be very hard to see around his nose there uh, so I was very careful to copy that because I wanted that to uh, to be right to get his expression right as well and the wagon here um, you see they're as round as I could make them in fact, I tried to make them so round they almost look square. So, <laughs> never mind. I was happy with them. So that's that's the main thing, isn't it, with your stitching? Now, the other thing I wanted to point out was that in the actual design. Oh, well, I'll show you because I got Harlequin to uh, do some photocopies here because I, I wanted to show you. Um. Can you see here, round the bird's head and round the wings and everything and round here, it's the back stitching is all like teeth, you know, like the teeth of a saw or something. You see that? And maybe this one's better. You can see how it's, that's how they, how they did it. And uh, I might have one here of the bird's beak here. See? Now, I, I just... I don't like that. Now, some people, or maybe a lot of people, think there's no problem and they do like it. Which is fine. Everybody's different. And it's really what you prefer. But there's something in me, like the square wheels or the hexagonal wheels my brain doesn't like it so I don't backstitch I couch around shapes so that they to me look more natural especially when it's a, a living creature I mean it's one thing to be uh, doing it with a house or something because houses are sort of square anyway except for the roof line but um, I wasn't having it so that's what I did. I did couching. And there's a stark difference between the two. Plus, it's a lot quicker. Just look around that wing there. 
Okay, I'll just show you the other again in a minute so you can see the contrast, the difference. And yeah, so that's what I did anyway, and uh, I was very happy about that. Uh, this particular ada it looks very much like a fiddler's cloth type ada and it's it's just not quite the same as ada now it does have areas where there are bits that stick up out of it um i can show it to you but it's got a kind of a thread through it and it does stick up every now and again, but it's still a nice colour though. So I think it does have a nice effect. So anyway, that's that's the Dove of Peace. And I think for the instructions here, they do say uh, you iron finished embroidery on the wrong side using a dry pressing cloth and medium temperature setting do not use steam. If necessary, we recommend dry cleaning for all fine embroidery. Well, I didn't do that. I mean, I always wash mine to set the stitches. Uh, I do that with all of mine, but I've never really heard of dry cleaning it. But uh, Anyway, so I thought, seeing as I was talking about couching, that I pulled this out this morning. These are poppies that I did uh, oh, a long time ago now, and I did have them in a frame for a while, and uh, I took them out, I took took it out of the frame. But anyway, here are the poppies, and I'm going to see if I can just show you uh, a little bit of couching, because I do have a couching video, but it's really not, not great. Um, uh, I think I've told you before that there was a woman, oh, I don't know if it was a woman or someone anyway, commented, and said it was a very bad video and uh, I deleted that comment and I really don't know why I did it because it was accurate I should have left it there she she had every right to say that it was a lousy video because it was because I was trying to do the couching to show you know I didn't really want to do it in the first place but somebody did ask me to show it so I did but I was trying to do it while looking through the iPad so I wasn't really looking directly at what I was doing. I was sort of trying to get my hand under the iPad. Oh, it was just, just a disaster. But I left it up because I thought, well, it does give a bit of an idea. And maybe people can work out how I do it. Um, and then, you know, there are only two comments I've ever uh, deleted on my videos. Uh, that one I shouldn't have. The other one, I really had every right to delete it because it was completely incorrect. So, uh, but anyway, um, here's the poppy here, and I'm just going to show you a little bit of couching just around the petal. Okay, at the moment it does have couching around it, but it's red, which I really don't know why I've done that because you can't really see the red, but maybe it just defined it a little bit more. I don't know. So, what I've got is I've got my needle here. And I've got the two loose ends. Oh, where can I show you? There, see? Two loose ends. And then the other end is where the loop is. Gosh, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's the loop end there. Now what I'm going to do is do a loop start at the back. So I'll just do that. Doesn't really matter, as long as it's in the, in the area of where you want to be doing your outlining. Loop start at the back. Then when I've done the loop start at the back, I'll just bring it through at where the, the petal is. So I'm just going to, it doesn't really matter which 
part of the petal you come to. So now I've got the two threads, okay? So I'm going to take one thread out and that's going to be the top thread. And that's the one I'm going to use for the outlining. And then the other thread I'm going to poke back down to the other side to the back. Okay. So you've got one thread on the bottom underneath and you've got the other thread on the top. I have shown this before, but it's just for people who, um, you know, are wondering. So I won't be doing this for long, it's just to give you an idea. So the top thread this one you can roll it around you can do anything with it see that so it's very mobile and it can follow the contours of your petal very easily so I'll bring the the other one through now from the bottom In theory, it's so much easier than it is in practice to show things, but anyway. So there's the, the top thread. So I'm going to just take that top thread Bear with me for a moment. I'm just going to do a few just to get it started. All right, can you see that there? The black is going around the edge of the petal. Now I'm going to go there and so you can just see it going round the petal with a nice natural curve. So this, what you just need to do is this, the, the thread with the needle on it it comes up from underneath, it loops over the top one and then you go back down into the same hole as you came up with. And that's how you get that effect. And you can imagine how much easier and quicker that is than backstitch. So I mean give it a try if you want to and if you don't well that's that's entirely your own personal business <laughs> as they say. All right so on to the next thing. After Dove of Peace I decided that I wanted to stitch uh, though he seemeth sleeping those words um, and the inspiration came from a piece by Lucy Beam Love in Stitches. Lucy Beam Love in Stitches. I'll just show you the picture. Sorry, shall I? Though he seemeth sleeping, cross stitch pattern. And I don't know if this was a reproduction or what Lucy did there but she uh, you know pr produced her piece 
of though he seemeth sleeping uh, in a sampler form. And I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to use those words and express them in a different way. Um, so I'll just put my iPad there and show you what I mean. Now, I wanted, well, I suppose I'll show you the picture first and I'll explain how I came about doing it. So, it's the story of Jesus who was in the boat. The disciples were uh, besides themselves with fear and anxiety and worry because uh, a storm had come up suddenly and the waves were crashing around the boat and uh, they actually had to wake Jesus up <laughs> and uh, he basically you know, told them to uh, have faith and everything was fine but uh, I think for me I just wanted to capture that feeling of the waves and everything so that's why I chose to use these waves here. Sorry about the reflection there. And that I got from uh, the Rocky Point Dimensions Kit. I adapted those waves for this piece against the black 8 o'clock, 18 count. And I didn't want them to go right to the edge there. I just wanted them to kind of fade out. And it just says, Dark the night and wild the waves, Christ the boat is keeping. Trust in him and have no fear, though he seemeth sleeping. And uh, that eight o'clock, uh, it was really quite uh, rough on the threads. So I tried using two threads. For the waves but they looked very bad I mean I'm not uh, people would know with me that I've never been somebody who was fussy about uh, stitches because they're stitches you know they don't have to be absolutely perfect in my view I think it takes away a little bit when things are so perfect that it's almost like a I don't know a row of teeth that have been uh, you know produced that way uh, by braces and all that sort of thing they look they look fine they look good but they almost look too, too perfect but even for me uh, these stitches were not laying how I would like so I just used the single strand instead so that's my though he seemeth sleeping you can see my lights there in the background uh, it's very difficult to get your lighting when you're doing videos, I find. it's, it's ac Actually, it's a nightmare, <laughs> to be quite honest, because they never seem quite right. But it's probably more to do with the subject matter they're reflecting off than the actual lights themselves. But anyway, uh, and the other thing I was doing was uh, this one here, uh, Tranquility. Uh, that one, uh, which was more really for the the cat down there on the sofa than anything else, but I do like it. I think it's quite nice. Uh, and this is as far as I got with that. It's got the houses there. And uh, I, I do enjoy it, but I have to be absolutely in the mood. So, uh, and my mind was already thinking about other things I was going to be doing. So that really doesn't help. And I usually put it away. If I start thinking about something else when I'm stitching something, I give up with the good graces. And uh, because I know, you know, I will come back to it. So, I just thought I'd just show you that one. Now, here's an interesting thing. This is, goes into my future plans. 
Now, Harlequin is very much a man's man. Always has been. And so it was with quite a lot of surprise that he told me about a piece that he liked. <laughs> and uh, I was quite surprised, I have to say. <laughs> and it's this piece here. <laughs> Don't you love it? Now, he does like cats. And his father, the leather cap that he wore, uh, you know, with this area here for the earphones and everything. <laughs> so, and I mean, it is a fine picture in its own way. So I said to him, look, I think I, <laughs> I don't mind uh, stitching that one, but I really don't want to be stitching the background because I've just got too many things that I'm planning to do. And it does take a while to do the background. So we decided, well, you know, he went online and he went looking. There's, there's another picture of it here. <laughs> so it's a beautiful cat, isn't it? It really is. Uh, and it's Anki Coleman Designs cross stitch. I'll be doing 18 count. Uh, and the, the fabric that he ordered is this one here. You see it's got the clouds. So it's it's really is perfect for that piece if you just imagine him imagine him on that. In fact I sort of do prefer the clouds. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll decide which way up the material will go. I'll get Harlequin to decide that, seeing as it's his piece. So that's the that's the fabric I'm using anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So he provided the fabric, and there is a companion that goes with that particular cat, and that's this one which he, <laughs> he's not that keen on. See, that looks a lot more like his, his dad's cap that he wore because it looked the leather. You can see the leather there. Uh, but I said, well, really, one of them looks as though he would, if he was in a, a you know, a, a, an air fight or a sortie or whatever you call it, he would sort of give them a bit of a chance to get away, whereas that one, he would be a warrior, a warrior cat. Um, I don't think he would give anybody a chance. Uh, so one's sort of in, in a kill mouse mode and the other one's in a let the mouse go mode. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Harlequin likes that one. And I sort of, oh, I don't know, I sort of have a, a sort of a grudging admiration for that one. Anyway, so that's the cats. He always has liked cats, so I think that is perfectly understandable. So that's that one for Harlequin. And the good thing is it's not really that big. Um, the 18 count is uh, 10 inches by 10 inches, uh, which is, you know, quite modest by my standards. <laughs> now, from that, the mood changes now. And that is to a Scarlet Quince piece because I don't really know uh, what I'm going to be doing next. It may well be that I will do the cat. I just want to show you, sorry, before I go any further, which is harking back. But that was the waves that I used from the, the gold collection Rocky Point, which I stitched couple of years ago and I just adapted those waves. Um, I used my own, I got the, um, you know, a, a colour palette I put together. I'm just using DMC threads instead of the threads that were provided uh, for Rocky Point it was a kit, but I just did my own colours for the waves. So sorry about that. Um, right, so anyway, now we can go on 
to the piece that I really like. Well, there are two pieces actually. Um, and this one I came across, The Promise by Morgan Westling. Now, this one, uh, if you'll allow me, I'll just read this. It's not very, not very long. Um, one of my favourite Bible stories when I was a child, Jesus was approached by a man who told Jesus that his daughter was dying and pleaded with him to put his hands on her that she might be healed. But before they reached his house, they received word that the girl had died. Jesus told her father not to be afraid but to believe. When they reached the house, Jesus told the assembled mourners that the girl was not dead but asleep. Jesus took the girl's hand and told her to get up, and she did. This work shows the moment when the little girl had, le uh, had been given her life back, the complete trust, gratitude and closeness to Jesus. Uh, the title comes from Jesus' promise, He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Um, yeah, so I, when I was three, almost four, I nearly died of pneumonia. Uh, in those days, uh, antibiotics were only just starting uh, to be produced, at least in England where I was. And um, my eldest sister told me that they were telling children not to play outside our house and to be very quiet because there was a, a very sick child in the house and um, I don't remember any of it. But in those days, um, if you got a fever from the pneumonia, you'd just be burning up, you know, and they would wait, there would be what they called the crisis when you were just so hot and then if you if that broke, if you sort of started to perspire and, and everything, they'd say the crisis was over and you were getting better. Um, and that's what happened to me. So I don't know if it's sort of partly that that gives me so much uh, connection to this piece. Uh, I think it could be that. So that's, that's a beautiful piece that I intend to stitch. Uh, now this one, Scarlet Quince, um, it's, I haven't got the dimensions here, but it's not huge either. Uh, it's a bit bigger than the cats. But uh, anyway, so I thought I'd share that with you. And then last night, uh, I came across this one here. There's only a few more to go here. Um, which is Anki Coleman Designs cross stitch and this is um, the side of a river but it's very much it reminds me very much of a barge trip that uh, my sister and her husband and my harlequin and I uh, we went on a barge trip for about three days uh, in England and that very much reminds me of the side of the uh, canals and everything so that will be a future stitch for sure. Now, the other thing, this is last but certainly not least, this caught my eye. Where is the top page here somewhere? So I've got a few things over here that I don't want to go flying. This one. Now, this one has really got my interest. Because the first thing I said to Harlequin, I'll just show you, uh, this is a cl closer upper one. There's a, the painting itself, and then there's the stitched. Uh, 
And the first thing I said to Harlequin when I looked at it was it looks as though a time traveller went back to that day and took a photograph. I've never seen The Last Supper presented in that way. You've got the women there who were doing the catering. The whole thing is just really, I don't know, there's just something about it. So that is what has taken my interest. So uh, very likely I will be stitching that one and I will also be stitching Harlequin's cat. So in a way I will probably have two going at once. <laughs> so, But in the meantime, I won't wait until I just do this first. It's Anki Coleman Designs and the size, I'll be doing 18 count. 27 and a bit inches by 13 and a bit inches. So they, they've they certainly put a lot into that small, relatively small area. So, um, you know, that just takes my breath away, actually, that piece. Now, before I do any of that stitching, I have four secret stitchings that I'm doing at the moment. They are petites. And they're only two designs, but I'm doing four of them. So they're secret stitches. Uh, so I have to do those first before I get to any of this other stitching. So that's just so that uh, you know uh, where I'm at. Um, Mania, I am thinking of doing something and I'll just have to see where I am when May rolls around. So that's all my stitching and my plans and everything. Um, and I now will go on to the uh, drawing that I was talking about, <laughs> which I won't spend much time showing you. But the good thing is, uh, <laughs> so there was a comment that, because uh, I said that Harlequin had bought me some pens and pencils and things. <laughs> this person said, tell Harlequin to stop buying you pencils. <laughs> pens and pencils because we want you to keep stitching <laughs> but for that person just so that they're reassured uh, it's not really taking any time away from my stitching because I'm doing they're almost doodles in a way and I'm doing it um, when we watch TV so I don't really stitch when I'm watching TV anyway I mean I could but I have to bring everything out of the stitchy room to do it so uh, and I don't usually watch that much, maybe an hour or so. At the moment, we're watching this rather uh, strange show. Uh, it's called uh, Married at First Sight. <laughs> and my daughter uh, wanted me to watch it because she likes all my comments about what I think of all the couples. <laughs> and I must say, I do see the funny side of some of it because... They pick particular personalities, so you can sort of see where it's going. And I can't help myself but chip in about what I think about the whole thing. And, of course, that's what she wants me to watch it for, so she can hear my views on it. Uh, but there are times I can't actually sit and watch it because it's so cringy. So I do this doodling at the same time. And uh, so I'm paying attention, but I'm not actually watching it fully. Uh, and... Uh, so this has come in very handy anyway. So I'll just show you what I mean. So I've done a lot of black and white uh, with the intention of um, colouring it in eventually. So there is a little bit of colour. I did do a little bit because I was saving... Uh, my pencils now my pencils harlequin got me some pencils and of course he doesn't do things by half measures let's look at that 300 300 so in even though it's not cross stitch in floss tube tradition i did not 
get any of the pencils out um, yet, which I will be getting them out. But if you just have a look at the top layer, because they're in, they're in layers like that in the box. I'll try and hold this up so you can see. see. And you can imagine how many layers of pencils there are. I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, how exciting is that? <laughs> I almost feel like a child again, actually, with all these beautiful coloured pencils. And then they give you this little chart that you can actually go through, like a DMC threads, and you can pencil do your little pencil colour there so that you've got your chart to look at to pick your pencil out. Uh, I'm not sure that I'll get as far as doing that. And they've all got their names like bright orange and jade green and all that sort of thing. So that's my big, big box of pencils anyway. And here's some of my efforts. Now they do have things called Zentangles on um, the internet. So if you look at Zentangles, they give you a lot of ideas about different things you can uh, draw. Uh, now, I had a bit of a look, but not too much, because I didn't want that to uh, interrupt what my imagination would tell me to begin with. You know, I think I will be looking at them uh, after I've got all my ideas down myself, because there must be a lot of really good ideas. I mean, I've seen just a few. But there must be so many, you know, I'm interested in 3D um, figures, you know, for on paper so that it looks like it's a 3D figure on there. So and he got me some pencils there, Faber-Castell. So I've been, you know, having a look at those. So here's, here's some of the... Oh, see, that's got a, a green man in it. I just put him in. And there's acorns and things. And oh, what else have I got in here? Because these were the... Got me some of these for sketching. So... I'll just show you a few of them. Oh, that, he got me some um, markers, and so I did a Strelitzia. But I, I did look at that one. It was on, uh, you know, where you can just get a photograph of a flower. So I sort of copied that. And um, there's a bit of colour in there. But it's amazing where you, you're... Uh, pen will go without you really if you're watching something and you're just sort of doodling it's like talking on the telephone and doodling at the same time you get all sorts of different things that idea I did get off as Entangle um, what else have we got see they're all very similar really I suppose that's sort of a whole lot of leaves um, and but it'll be interesting to see well there's sort of waves I did it'll be very interesting to see how these look after they've been coloured in and because I've got one here coloured in and it, it goes any which way you don't really know which way up it goes so I would say anyone can do this I mean I if I can do it anybody can do it and it's very relaxing you know if you're somebody that's a bit uh, nervy uh, it really does help to calm you down um, what else have I got? Let's see if there's anything else here worth, worth looking at. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I wanted the, that to show like the wind blowing, so all the leaves are blowing away and and the flowers are blowing. So that that's giving you a bit of an idea. Now the other thing that I want to share with you, which is the final thing. Oh, you see, my son got this. It was a complimentary. It was that like that. So I I decorated that. It's a little it's a little booklet. So, yeah, so you can do all sorts of things. Now, the other thing is these. So I'll just get them out. Because I'd never seen these before. So, See, this was a, a Zentangle type thing. See there. And these are little, they're almost like erasers, but it's pencil. Well, it's paper. That's sort of like a paper. And what they call them, um, blending stump. Yeah. That's a blending stump, which is those, and this is these are tortillons. They're hollow with a flat bottom on them, whereas these blending stumps are actually pointed at both ends. So that's what they are. And what they do is if you have pencil, like there's some pencil there, for example, you can rub it. And it kind of blends in and shades it a little bit. So that was quite interesting because I've never even heard of these. So that was fun. I'll just see if I can. I mean, this is just all of this is just playing around. And the good thing about it is that you really can't make mistakes because you're just doodling around it's just patterns you know I mean and endless things you can uh, with lines and and things so I'm going to have great fun coloring all these in because it's I've sort of in a way I've made myself a coloring book haven't I uh, so I'm just suggesting to you that if you want something that's relaxing all you need is a pen and a bit of paper really I, I was using these pens which are um, sharpie s gel pen so and a few colored pencils i mean what's cheaper than that so just a thought for you anyway um and i do i find it very relaxing when we're watching as i say this show uh, <laughs> i think they do have them married at first sight in other countries i'm sure they do in england and america and all it does for me really is show just how hazardous it is uh, to actually have an arranged marriage i mean i know they uh, there are people that do uh, say that it works quite well uh, but I really do have my doubts, uh, but maybe it, it's more to do with the kind of uh, culture that you're in uh, that makes it work. And maybe, whereas in the West we have endless choices about everything, and I think that's one of the reasons why uh, marriages don't always last. Uh, partly because the vows that are taken on the wedding day they're not really taken perhaps as seriously as they should be because it is a contract you're, you're signing a contract 
with very uh, meaningful uh, rules. I mean, it's just one of the biggest decisions in your life, isn't it, to get married? But I, I do think now with all the, uh, what do you call it, who hoopla around getting married and all the, you know, it's very easy to think no further than the actual day, you know. And maybe for girls, uh, every girl wants her day to be a princess, doesn't she? And maybe for them, uh, you can sort of understand uh, why they want to get married because they do want to be a princess for that day but then the hard work starts after that and uh, I think maybe in other times when uh, vows were taken more seriously uh, you know there, there are days when you're not that keen on your partner for some reason they might be really annoying you, <laughs> you know? And uh, that doesn't mean you don't love them. And, uh, you know, that's the point, isn't it? I think uh, there's maybe a little bit too much reliance now on what the person does for a job, what uh, their income is, uh, if the female's working, how much she brings to the table and all the rest of it. Um, but if you haven't got that love there, uh, in the first instance, uh, then you've got nothing. You know, that's what I think anyway. I mean, for richer, for poorer, that's the whole point, that you love transcends everything. So if you haven't got that love, if you're not actually marrying with that love as your bedrock, then really the marriage doesn't have much chance. Uh, you know, it, it can work, uh, but it makes it quite a tough row to hoe, I would say. Uh, <laughs> came out of nowhere yet again, once of, one of my little homilies. <laughs> so anyway, to get off that subject, um, I hope everybody has uh, some great stitching ahead. That they're enjoying what they're doing and uh, if uh, you catch yourself doodling while you're talking on the phone keep that little scrap of paper whatever it may be and put it in a box somewhere and uh, you, before you know it you'll have a little collection and you'll be able to get a box of coloring pencils and you'll be able to sit and color your own coloring in book won't you <laughs> like me i'll be coloring for days uh, so i this box of pencils to be honest it is quite daunting because there are so many different colors i think that's the problem isn't it if you've got a limited number of pencil colors it does make it easier i would say than 300 i mean come on uh but anyway i'm sure i'll muddle through so until next time uh i'll catch up with you then and it's goodbye from Mary Rose for now and all the best to everyone. Goodbye for now. <laughs>